again, our Office of Homeland Security are aware of those threats, that plans are in place to minimize the disruption, to catch hacking attempts before they cause any damage. And honestly, this is a problem we didn't have on our radar until so many years ago. But it is an increasingly important one, and uh, we're trying to be vigilant about it. On the other end of the equation is the consumer privacy concerns. Utilities do collect a lot of information, very personal information about uh, individuals, their account holders, and energy use. We want to be certain that they're collecting only the information that they need, that they are protecting it appropriately, and releasing it appropriately. And recently we've had that issue come before us. At this point it has been deferred back to the Department of Commerce which will be uh, initiating further investigation in conjunction with the utilities and uh, others who have the interests of the consumer at heart. There is work going on on this issue nationally. We want to be sure to take advantage of that and assure that the appropriate protections are in place. On the other hand, of course, there are lots of potential uses of that information for increased energy efficiency. And so finding that sweet spot between collecting only the information necessary to administer the system and maximize the potential for energy efficiency while at the same time protecting the rights of the consumers is an important sweet spot and we're trying to settle upon that. The last of the challenges I will mention is related to telephone and broadband access. It's no surprise to anyone that uh, reliance on landline telephones is diminishing, but it's still an incredibly <coughs> important part of our telephone system, and we have a huge investment in the copper wire that runs to virtually every home and business throughout the state. That's a tremendous asset, and yet the companies that are responsible for maintaining it are, have, are losing customers and have fewer customers available to help support those costs. How are we going to address that going forward? We have uh, very limited jurisdiction over either wireless or uh, cable or internet communication, but those are all providing telephone services and we want to be sure that the quality of service and consumer protection is adequate. Uh, similarly, we know that broadband access is critical. There isn't a school or a business or a healthcare facility anywhere in the state of Minnesota that can really function appropriately without good access. Uh, again, we are not directly responsible for that, but we have some oversight to assure that when carriers are attempting to get federal funds to expand the broadband system, that we know where they're expanding and they have the wherewithal to do it effectively, efficiently, and in a way that's going to get 